It's pretty well known that when it comes to desktop operating systems, Windows doesn't really have any competition. It has over 70% market share and shows no signs of slowing down anytime soon. And to put that into perspective, the next highest operating system is at about 10%. Windows has dominated the market for decades, and there's honestly a pretty good reason for that. Applications that were made 20 years ago for Windows 98 probably still run somewhat, at least on Windows 11. It also has long-term support channels that businesses, hospitals rely on. And unlike macOS, where you need Apple hardware, Windows is incredibly flexible. You can install it on pretty basic computer hardware. Microsoft even lets you use it for free. You're just stuck with an annoying activate Windows watermark, reminding you every day that you have yet to give them your money. But I think it's interesting when you think about developers because the most sought after computer for a developer is a MacBook. Most development videos on YouTube have a MacBook in the thumbnail. And there is kind of a reason for that. If you want to develop apps specifically for iOS, Mac is by far the best place to do that. Like my app, minimail.app, join the waitlist. But things get interesting when you look at the Stack Overflow developer survey, where instead of a global statistic, it specifically asked developers what operating system they used. And Windows only came up 58% of the time, which is still a lot, but it did drop quite a bit. Mac OS is at about 30%. And Linux is at 27%. So as somebody who uses macOS and Windows, I thought it was finally time to try the Penguin operating system. So another kind of interesting thing about Linux, if you're used to macOS and Windows, is there is not just one operating system. There are hundreds, thousands of different distributions of Linux. And each one is different in its own way. Some are really easy for beginners when some are more advanced and require more setup, but there will be less things that you don't need in your operating system. The Stack Overflow survey directly says Ubuntu, so let's give that a go. Now I've installed Windows many times before. I knew how to install an operating system, you know. You go online, you get the ISO file, and you flash it onto a USB. You plug it in and it will just work and it'll install. That is not what happened. Most distributions of Linux offer a live demo. So you plug in the USB and you can just use the operating system right there. You can install things, you can tweak things instead of being stuck on a setup screen. And if you decide you like it, there's a button in the bottom that you can click to install it. That is a great feature. You can literally try it before you buy it. Whenever I finally decided to stop playing around and actually install the thing, I got hit with a, you must disable Windows BitLocker error. Funny thing is, I never enabled Windows BitLocker. I didn't know it existed until I got that error and I had to look up what it even was. So I had to go back into Windows and I had to turn off BitLocker, which took 20 hours. I am not exaggerating. BitLocker was enabled on a two terabyte hard drive of mine. So it took a very, very long time to decrypt the drive. Uh, but when it finally did finish, I rebooted back into Ubuntu and the error was finally gone. I also ran into another problem where I was booting the USB in legacy boot. I don't even know what this means, but that was a problem. B, there was two options and one said UEFI and one didn't say UEFI. So I just clicked the one without it. But that's actually, that was a huge mistake uh, because that caused more problems down the line because it caused Ubuntu to not recognize that I had Windows installed on my system also. Looking that one up didn't really help either. I just had to figure it out for myself. I just eventually tried the other option and then it worked. So cool. Once the installer actually ran though, it was pretty nice. Not once did it ask me to buy an Office 365 subscription. After the install was done, I took some time. I actually did a bit of coding inside of Linux. Uh, I use VS Code, so like honestly, the coding experience was quite similar to Mac or Windows. Then when I had finished all my, you know, I did some screen recordings and stuff, I wanted to get them off Linux onto a USB so I could edit. The first hurdle, my USB was formatted with NTFS. Basically, it's a Windows only format. I had to go back into the Windows and back up everything on that drive and then go back into Linux and format it as a partition that Linux can understand, which I did XFAT. So I did that. I put the files on the USB. Then I went back into Windows and Windows couldn't read it. So then on Windows, I tried to format it again and then I put it back and then Linux couldn't read it. And it was like this back and forth game for a few hours. What was weird is both operating systems saw the drive, but just wouldn't mount it. So literally what I had to do after a lot of trial and error was go onto Linux, reformat the drive, completely wipe it, and I had to clean the drive. And then I went onto Windows and I reformatted it on Windows using XFAT. And now it works. 
I don't know why, but I'm not asking questions. But once I'd actually used Ubuntu for a bit, I kind of understood why developers like it so much. The UI is super clean and simple, the animations are smooth, the whole system feels fast and lightweight, like you could probably install Ubuntu on an old laptop and breathe some new life into it. And it's not running a whole bunch of services in the background that you never asked for. Installing most new software is incredibly simple. On Ubuntu you just open the terminal and you type a short command and then, and then you can enter as many apps as you want. So on a fresh install with one command you can install everything you need. One advantage that I had heard of before of Linux was that if you use Docker at all, Docker runs very well on Linux because basically on Windows it has to run inside a kind of a virtual environment, but on Linux Docker can just run natively. But I noticed I noticed a lot of small things as well, like like all package managers were just more fast and consistent. Docker containers build faster. Configuring Git works no problem. I still to this day I have so many problems with Git on Windows. At the end of the day it's personal preference. For most people Linux will never be able to fully swap over until it's able to run all their programs. Any Adobe program does not work at all on Linux. Gaming has gotten a lot better thanks to Valve and their Proton layer. They even have a website now where you can see how playable a game is. And there's also just little hardware quirks. Sometimes when I booted into Ubuntu my Bluetooth USB wouldn't be recognized. Hey, yeah I have a USB for Bluetooth. It wouldn't be recognized and then I'd just be left without audio and I'd reboot, still wouldn't work, I'd reboot again, and it would work. I don't know why, but it's just a little kind of irritating quirk. And when researching, people have a lot of problems with Wi-Fi cards and Wi-Fi USBs. Thankfully, I'm on Ethernet here. I didn't have to deal with that, but it's definitely something to note. And also, NVIDIA drivers are there, but they're not at kind of the same level as you get on Windows. You have a lot less customization. You, you know, you don't have the control panel or anything. And, you know, you can't download the NVIDIA program for automatic drivers. If you are somebody who mostly does like backend work, you know, web development like Python, Rust, or Go, any of those languages, if you want a system that is lightweight, distraction free, it might be worth a try. Again, you don't even have to install it, you can just use it right off the USB. But if you're not the type of person who likes to tinker around with things to get it to work perfectly, Windows or Mac is probably your better bet. There's also a middle ground approach, which is what I did, where you do a boot. Like right now I'm running Windows, but if I restart my computer, I see what's called a grub menu, which lets me pick whether I want to go into Ubuntu or whether I want to go into Windows. And they're both installed on the same drive. After spending some time with Ubuntu, I don't think I'm going to be switching over completely, but I'm still definitely going to keep it dual booted. So whenever I want, it's right there. When researching some of my problems for this video, I came across a lot of people that also have a lot of random problems setting up Linux on their machine. So it seems to kind of prefer certain hardware. That's something I'll have to keep in mind if I go forward with it. Leave a like if you want me to try Arch.